Fat Dag is a Weight Watchers leader in Indianapolis, Indiana. However, the views and opinions expressed during this podcast are his own. They do not represent the views of Weight Watchers. And now, here's your host and wingman, Fat Dag. I am your host, Fat Dag. You're listening to Wise Advice. My weight loss journey failed when I focused on how. It wasn't until I switched my focus to why that I truly transformed myself. Join the show on the web at fatdag.com and follow along on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, all at Wise Advice. Send in your comments, your questions, and your celebrations. I'll include them as part of the show. But before we dive in, remember, when you're out of points, stop eating points. Hey, I'm honored to be your wingman as we walk through this journey together because I believe in you. Well, hello. Welcome to episode 194. And I want to just kind of give you a couple little updates. If, if you haven't already, get over to your app store. Whether it's the, the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store, search for Wise Advice with Fat Dag. I tell you, I got, a, uh, I got an Android phone, a Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus the other day, and I ha- I'm not used to the Android platform. I went into the Google Play Store to look for the app to make sure it was there, and the app told me it's been downloaded over 5,000 times on the Android platform, which just completely blows my mind. Apple continues to lead the way there, uh, but that's a that's incredible amount of numbers. We hit 2 million downloads of the actual show. Uh, man, we continue to just keep everyone focused, keep everybody in the game. That is absolutely the best part. I want to thank all of you. Episode 194, can you believe that? 2 million downloads, 5,000 downloads of the app in the in the Android store. Uh, the Apple store gets about, I don't know, about 100 and a half, 200 downloads a week. So just incredible, incredible, incredible. I, I really, really, really appreciate your support. Those of you who've taken the next step and you become a patron, uh, thank you for that as well. That continues to help keep the, the show funded. It, it eliminates a lot of the commercials. Of course, we're not 100% commercial free, but that is kind of where I would love to head with it. And the patrons certainly do that. You can do all that by going to fatdag.com, clicking on become a patron. Uh, like I said, really, really appreciate all your support. You know, I get a ton of email, as you as you might get uh, might imagine, and I tell you, you know, a lot of them break my heart. A lot of them really pull at my heartstrings. Um, but every once in a while, emails come in, and I and I want to laugh. And, and I know that's not fair. I I know that's not right. Um, but this email I'm getting read, I mean, it's it's hilarious. And and so I'm laughing. I'm like, you've got to be kidding me. And, I, and I'm laughing at this email. So I apologize for being um, insensitive at the beginning, but but you're going to laugh too, I think. Um, you may not admit it, uh, but I think you will. Hang on as we read an email from Pam out of Valparaiso, Indiana. She says, well, hi, Mike. First of all, I want to thank you for your service to our country, and also thanks for being the inspiration, founder, and head cheerleader of the Wise Wingmen Facebook group. I'm truly blessed to have you and the Wingmen in my life. I promised myself I would write to you and tell you my why on my anniversary date with Weight Watchers, which is May 3rd. I've lost 66 pounds this past year, and I have 31 pounds to reach goal. My history is that, um, that I'm referring to, I'm a returning lifetime member who lost 100 pounds 10 years ago. Over the past years, I managed to lose focus, having gone through divorce and many other storms in life that, that uh, many other storms that life threw at me, including cancer, and I gained most of my weight back. I was on the road to self-destruction. At 64 years old, the the committee in my head was telling me that I was too old to do this diet thing again. Luckily, I have a wonderful sister, Sherry, who convinced me that you are never too old to be healthy. She led me back to Weight Watchers and my salvation. My why, I want you to know that like you, I too wear a uniform. It's not quite like yours. Mine consists of a big red nose polka dot bloomers, brightly colored dress, a yellow wig, and oversized shoes. Yes, I'm a real clown. I'm Snickers. 
The reason for my coming out of the closet is to tell you all that for 34 years, I have been entertaining the public, cheering up the sick, raising money for the needy, all spreading joy and laughter at celebrations. I spent my life giving to others. I'm even in the Clown Hall of Fame. I'm sharing this because I want to give testimony that because of my obesity, I was about to give up my 34 years of doing what I was meant to be doing and what I love. I wore a painted smile and I appeared, I appeared to be happy on the outside, but at 246 pounds, I was crying on the inside. My body hurt, my feet hurt, and so did my heart. The strange thing I learned, I guess, was that I was accepted and loved in a silly costume being overweight, but I was treated differently when the bloomers and the wig came off, and I faced, faced the public as an obese woman. It's kind of sad, don't you think? Well, fast forward now a year later and lighter. My pep is back in my step. My joy is back in my heart. And once again, the desire to spread laughter is in my being. Why? Because I now look in the mirror and I like me. I have love and self-respect and I realize that to make others happy, I need to be happy in my own skin. I've gone from a size 22, 24 to a size 14, size 16. And yes, in case you're wondering, I have to safety pin my polka dot bloomers to keep them from falling down. In closing, thanks to you, my Weight Watchers leader in the group, and all of my fellow wingmen for helping me find my way back to my own little circus. Wishing you and everyone good focus and continued success as we continue our lifetime journey. I want you to know I plan to be in Indy in September. Oh, you'll recognize me. I'll be the one with the big red nose. Miles of smiles, Pam. And then Pam adds a PS and it says, I once had an elderly woman tell me, you can't lose weight. Skinny clowns aren't funny. I am proving her wrong. Pam, way to go. What an awesome email. Um, you know, I, I can't wait to be in your presence because I love clowns. You know, I know there's a, there's a love hate relationship with clowns, right? I am on the love side of clowns. I think clowns are the coolest thing in the world. And I really like the skinny clowns because they can move better. They can run around the room better. You can just see the energy in their step and you are getting that back. Congratulations on your 66 pound weight loss. Congratulations on your one-year anniversary tomorrow. Way to do this. You know, and, and what I love is that, you know, you're a returning lifetime member. You've lost 100 pounds before, so you clearly know that you can do this. Without a doubt, you, you can do this. You, you know you have proof. You have done it before. Your age doesn't matter. It's the same skills, the same technique. It's the same mindset that gets you there. It doesn't matter how old you are. At 64, the committee in your head needs to be evicted. You kick them out, and, and your, your sister Sherry was exactly right in bringing you back into the fold and say, you know what? We can do this. You, you've managed some amazing things in your life. And, and, you know, obviously all those storms that life has to throw at you, uh, beating cancer, congratulations on that. Um, you know, and then of course, you know, that, that had to, um, take a toll on you. Obviously during that phase, you gained some of your weight back. That's okay. You, you were at that point doing what you needed to do to survive. And here you are now thriving as a result. You're clearly on your way. You're, you're, uh, maybe I think we need to rename your clown name from Snickers to maybe Quest Bar or, or RX Bar or something along that line because Snickers just isn't going to work anymore uh, in the clown. But uh, I love what you've done with your life. I love that you devoted your life to helping other people, making other people smile. You know firsthand that if you can put a smile on someone's face, if you can give someone just a little bit of hope, if you can distract them from all the crazy things they have going in their life, if you can take for just a moment and, and channel their energy to you and to your laughter and to the excitement you bring, it puts them in a much better place. That's what we're doing here. For, for just a moment, all I'm trying to do is distract you and, and then remind you that you can do this. So I think in a way we're, we're exactly alike is that, that we both want to make sure that other people can realize their dreams. 
What we have to realize, Pam, as we do this is that, is that as we allow other people to fulfill their dreams, the only way they can f- fulfill those dreams is that if, if we continue to stay engaged with them. You staying engaged, you making them laugh, you keeping them smiling, you can do that now that you're down 66 pounds because, because you feel better, you feel more energized, and I know that energy transcends out of you into them. You have to keep doing that in order for them to thrive. And, and so your journey, your mission is so vital to their success. But more importantly, it's vital, it's vital to your success as well. You're absolutely doing it with the amazing team of your, your leader, your group, the wingman in the Facebook group. All together, we are our own little circus. And how fun is that that you are our lead clown getting it done. So Pam, it's very fun to have you on Facebook Live as we're, as we're going over this email. Uh, I say you go to the lady that told you that you couldn't lose weight because skinny clowns aren't funny. I, I tell her you can, I say you continue to prove her wrong. I think you go make her laugh so hard that, that she turns into, um, you know, just, just get, getting it. She goes to the point where she's like, yeah, skinny clowns, uh, not only are they funny, they're healthy and they'll be around for a heck of a lot longer. Now, last piece of advice I'll give you is, um, you know, and I certainly don't mean to insult you in your profession, but uh, I would drop the safety pin from your bloomers. You know, I think a skinny clown with the pants around their ankles, I think that becomes hilarious. And so how fun would it be as you're running around the place if your pants fall down? I think, I think you add that to your routine, uh, you're going to kick it up a notch and, and get this done. Pam, congratulations. Happy, happy one year anniversary. What an amazing year it's been. You're absolutely down uh, 66 pounds. You've completely changed your life. You completely changed your outlook on life. And as a result, you're absolutely changing lives. Pam, thank you so much for writing in. Thank you for being a part of our community. Uh, Gene writes in and says, Hey, dear Mike, I recently started listening to your podcast. I started with the most recent, and then I decided to start from the beginning. Currently, I'm on episode 38. I started Weight Watchers April 2018, so I'm coming up on a year. Um, I wanted to lose about 40 pounds. After losing 25, my leader and the other ladies doing the weigh-ins at the scales began telling me that I looked good and I should stop there and make that my goal. So I did, and I am a lifetime member now. But I really wasn't happy with that, and I wanted to reach my personal goal, so I continued losing. I've now, I've now lost 30 pounds, and again, they are telling me I should stop losing, and that I possibly have body dysmorphia. If I lose the seven more pounds that I would like to lose, I will still be within the healthy BMI range for my gender, age, and my height. Granted, I'm at the lower end of it still, but I'm still within it. I've heard you say several times that when you reach your goal, you will know it. But I'm starting to wonder, what if I don't know it? I am still not satisfied with how I look, and I'm beginning to wonder if they are right. I'll be 55 in May. I'm five foot uh, three, five foot five and a three quarters, and a female. People tell me that I'm not in my 20s anymore, and I will never achieve that figure again. Are they right? Should I stop at a goal weight that I'm not satisfied with, or should I continue and believe that I will know when I've lost enough? I love your podcast. I am continually amazed at the insight you have and the excellent advice you give in such a thoughtful, caring, compassionate way. I absolutely believe in your premise of focusing on the why of your journey, and so the name of your podcast is fitting. However, when I listen, my mind is saying wise, W-I-S-E advice. I hope you are able to give me some insight into my situation as well. Thank you so much for all you do. You are truly helping many. Thank you for your service to our country. I'm the mother of three Army veterans, one of which is still active in the Army National Guard. So when I say thank you for your service, I am saying it with true appreciation and understanding of what that means. Sincerely, Gene. Gene, congratulations on reaching a lifetime. Congratulations on being a lifetime member. Uh, that is not easy. That, that's, that's you being focused. That's you getting disciplined. And at some point, we get so, uh, so dialed in and so focused that, that maybe we don't truly see the bigger picture. 
Now, you know, this is this is an interesting email for me because I do believe that when you hop on the scale, you'll know at some point when you've when you've got to the point where you don't want to lose any more weight. But there's also a, a subsection or a, a, a section of the population that may not ever feel that. Because, you know, our media does a great job of telling us what the perfect body should look like. And, and you know, outside of Photoshop, a lot of us aren't ever going to reach that. So at some point, you do have to then be comfortable with, with a, I look really good, I feel really good. No, I am not a, a, a supermodel in that regard. That's what clothes are for, you know, putting on a pair of jeans, putting on a t-shirt hides a lot of those body imperfections that, that if we were trying to solve them, we would certainly have a difficult time, especially as we creep up in age as well. In this particular case, what I would ask you to do is I would ask you to go check in with your doc. I think that's the most important piece. I think, I think you know, your leaders mean well, the receptionist means well. I think at this time, it's for you to go check in with your doctor, find out what they think. Get a professional opinion here because I tell you, you know, I, I heard that a lot. I heard people tell me, Mike, you're losing too much. You're losing too much. And, uh, and I continued losing for a little bit beyond that. I've since put a little back on because I feel more comfortable at that stage. I've added some muscle, which I would encourage you to do as well. I would encourage you to add some strength training to it. Throw out the scale number. Quit, you know, st quit being focused so much on the actual number on the scale. Focus on your overall health. That's why I'd recommend checking in with a doc because that doc is going to give you some amazing insight into the whole journey. Um, you're doing amazing work. Uh, you know, you're coming up on a year. Uh, you're 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 in. You're a lifetime member. You're in the healthy range. That's what the goal really is. You know, with five to seven pounds, you know, it's not going to make a big difference here or there. Um, but I but I I do I truly do want you to go check in. Uh, with a medical professional just to kind of get one more opinion of someone who's unbiased, right? So, so you have bias on your side. The, the Weight Watchers folks have bias on their side. Checking in with your medical professional, they'll have access to a lot more data than just a simple scale number, and they will certainly give you some advice. So that's my recommendation for you. And again, I'll throw in uh, strength training. You know, there's, there's, not, there's no replacement for building a little bit of muscle. And uh, you know, adding muscle changes the way your body looks. Uh, it, it keeps the scale satisfied as well, but, but your body changes. But you know, at some point, we have to realize that, that you're right, that the body of a 20-year-old isn't 100% possible for a lot of us. Um, but with some strength training, you can certainly tone it up and look really really good. So that's where we headed. So Gene, thank you for your email. Keep, uh, keep me posted right back in uh, and let me know what's going on. But congratulations on hitting lifetime. That's a big, big accomplishment. You did that. You've completely changed your life. And so now I just really want you to preserve it. I want you to take care of you and I want you to, to accept what's going on and, uh, and really just be overall happy with the entire journey. So thanks for that. Next up, Nicole uh, writes in with an email. She says, uh, she goes, hey, Mike, my boy, today is his goal day. He's down 87.2 pounds, celebrating the success of Landon. He was diagnosed with autism and written off at the age of three by the neurodevelopmental psychologist. He's heading for all the coexisting diseases that accompany with obesity. We tackled Landon's weight gain, which started with medication, and it changed, and then his insatiable appetite. Landon has overcome so much, and I'm celebrating him. Again, he was diagnosed with autism at age three, written off by the neurodevelopmental psychologist. Wow, this child is in his third year of community college with help and doing great. He knows what he wants, and he's pretty good at getting it. Remember the old adage is true, no food is a sin. Landon eats six foods. The color is yellow. Mostly chicken tenders and fries, no vegetables at all, one banana or apple per day, one probiotic drink, no coffee, no tea, one diet soda per day, no cheese, no pizza, no peanut butter, uh, drive throughs every second day, one order of chicken tenders, fries, and a drink, plus a plain dry burger. This fulfills two meals. It's all about moderation, choice, and fear of diabetes and needles. 
He really, really enjoyed celebrating with chicken tenders, fries, and bread at Macaroni Grill. The best part? Being the Weight Watchers leader that got to celebrate with my boy hitting goal. It was priceless. Thanks, Nicole. Nicole, uh, very, very cool. I've seen the post in the Wise Wingman Facebook group uh, of Landon and you together. What an amazing accomplishment. What, a, what an amazing role model you've been for him as well. You're, you're doing great on your own right. Uh, you're, the two of your journeys is just absolutely amazing. And for Landon to be down 87.2 pounds is absolutely incredible. And, and you've absolutely proven, you're right, is no food is off limits. Certainly, moderation plays its role in here, and that is how uh, you've been, he's been able to get it done. So very, very, very proud of you. Very proud of him. Uh, I, you know, we've, we've chatted a little bit before offline as well, and you know, I know the struggles that you've gone through, and I know how incredibly proud of him you are, and I know how incredibly proud of himself that he is, and you know, off to community college with a little bit of help. Uh, it's just such a cool story all around to be able to sit here and celebrate with Landon and you. So, Landon, congratulations, 87.2 pounds. Incredible. Absolutely incredible. And now the best part is, is he has his whole life ahead of him. You know, not having to face obesity with all the other challenges he has going on is such an amazing gift that the two of you have given each other. Landon, again, congratulations. I'm very, very, very proud of you. Uh, last up uh, is I want to talk to you. This email comes in, um, and it's actually from Sabra. And she writes in, she says, out of Chantilly, Virginia, she says, uh, Hi, Fat Dag. Uh, thank you so much for your podcast. Many in my Sunday morning Weight Watcher meeting call you our car boyfriend. And from all of us in the Northern Virginia, we thank you for being an integral part of our weight loss and healthy lifestyle journey. I want to share with you and all the fat daggers out there that what I've done and ask your thoughts and advice. I've lost 106.2 pounds over the last four years embracing my inner turtle, as it were, and for the past month, the scale has not cooperated despite my valiant efforts. It's happened before. It'll happen again, but I'm 12 pounds from goal, and with each passing 0.1 pound, I feel myself getting more and more antsy. My husband is worried that I'm too attached to the scale, and I should weigh myself less frequently, though right now I only weigh once a week. That said, the number means quite a bit to me, and I see that I'm way, 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 way too attached to it. I'm more interested in body composition changes, and I've been working with a personal trainer for the past 15 months to build significant lean mass and lose body fat. And wow, it's working. But still, that scale and the goal within reach, ugh. So, in a rare moment of extreme frustration... I share with my meeting family my situation, and they rightly set me straight to help me see things differently as usual. I subsequently wrote the below letter to the scale, and I found this to be a truly cathartic experience that is helping me distance myself from the attachment to the number. Under the letter is a question for you. It goes like this. Dear scale, where to begin other than the obvious? I hate you. I've known you for as long as I can remember, and I never really liked you. I remember our first experiences together, my whole family dieting when I was only six or seven, and we all had weigh-in every Saturday morning. If you're up, things are bad. If you're down, you're either getting a Coke or a candy bar to celebrate. My mom and dad did their best. They too have always struggled with weight, and I'm sure they didn't like you either. Same with my brother and my sister. In fact, I'd find it hard to name anyone I know that really likes you. So sad for you, but you know, you suck. So here's how I really feel about you and what I want for my future, a future where you, Mr. Scale, are of minimal to no impact. I have always disliked you. We've had a long, intimate relationship, and it, is, it has at times been good when the numbers were going down, but I learned to put too much energy and impact on the numbers you showed back to me. 
it became ingrained in me that the smaller numbers are better and uh, mean that you're doing good. Bigger numbers are very bad, and that's where you are if you see them reflected back at you. You're a bad person. You lack self-control. You're a mess. You're huge. You're horrible. You have no willpower. Well, you know what? That is a crock. You are nothing. A hunk of metal that measures the pull of gravity at one point in time. You don't matter. You don't define me, and I will no longer let you control how I feel about myself. You are feedback, and that's it. Like clothing fitting too tightly or too loosely, a body feeling energetic or sluggish, what matters is over time the trend. Over time, any one measure you give us is nothing. It means nothing unless it's in the context of the progressive trend over the last and the last month, if not the last year or so. There's just so much involved. The body is too complex, and you, Mr. Scale, are too stupid and too simple of a device to be able to deal with that complexity in any kind of acute way. I'm done. I'm tired of letting the numbers you show me dictate how I feel about myself or in general. I refuse to let you make me feel bad about myself, worthless, dumb, frustrated, defeated. I am unstoppable and cannot be defeated, certainly not by anything as lame as a scale. So we have to break up. We can still see each other once a week for the sake of simple reflection, but that's it. And when we do see each other, don't be surprised at my lack of enthusiasm to see you nor my lack of real interest in any one thing you have to say, because again, you don't matter. And like the amazing, wonderful, healthy food I choose to put in my body now, I will choose to see you once a week. And it's my choice, and I'll do it because I want to. I want to get contextual feedback that gives me a general idea of whether on the right, whether I'm on the right track with the thousands of other life choices I'm making every day to take care of myself, my body, my mind, and my spirit. But I'm not really going to care any longer what you say. I am officially, as of today, taking away your power over me. And if you ever make me feel as bad as you did last week, I'm going to grab a huge hammer and whack at you until you are nothing but a tiny bits and pieces. Not the Weight Watcher scale, but I'll buy a new one just to do that because you are all alike, you scales, and none of you matter, and none of you have the power to make me feel bad or good about myself. Only I can do that. So there. And that's the end. So, so she said, I read this uh, to the scale at my meeting this past Sunday. It was very empowering. That said, I know, Mike, you weigh every single day. I know the most long-term weight maintainers weigh every day. I also know that most normal weight people don't weigh much at all and simply use their clothing as a determining factor for needing to adjusting things. Not sure I'll ever be able to do to be like that, but I imagine it's what my husband wants for me. Ideally, it's what I want for me also. Is this something I need to figure out on my own through trial and error and see what works best? Do I start now or when I hit goal? I don't want to be obsessed with the number. I don't want that number to influence my attitude, but I know it's a critical marker. Does weighing more frequently give each weight value looking back at you from the scale less importance or influence over how you feel? Thanks so much for your insights. You can share to help me on this last bit of my 46-year long weight loss journey. Yes, pretty much my entire life. I probably lost and gained over 1,000 pounds if you add it all up. And I've been a lifetimer uh, once for 37 seconds until I quit because I didn't need it anymore. Big surprise. That did not work out. So this time is forever, and goal is just another of the many milestones on the lifelong journey to live a healthy, active lifestyle. I'd love your thoughts on distancing myself from the scale, or actually how to best distance myself from the value I put on the scale each time that I weigh myself. Thank you for all you do, Sabra. Sabra, what a very emotional email. Uh, I can relate to a lot of what you said, but, uh, but I want to go here, right? I think if this works for you, you've got to continue in that journey. The, the cool thing about this process is we have to figure out what works for us, and we have to figure out how we're going to handle that. So how I tell you how I approach it will be drastically different than how you approach it. But if this works for you, then you have to continue in that lane. I have figured out that, to me, the scale is just data. 
It, it took me a while to come to that conclusion. I, I can almost every single morning when I hop on the scale, I can predict which direction the scale is going to go. And it's all based on the activity I did the day before. It's, it's like clockwork. If, I, if I'm very, very good with the tracker, I can predict the scale will be down in the morning. If I am not very good in the tracker, I can predict the scale will be up in the morning. I get on, I get the data, I see it, I understand it, it tweets to the entire world. I know that about me. That scale doesn't bother me in that regard. I don't give it any power whatsoever. I understand that it's just data, but, but it didn't happen to me overnight. I, I kind of approached it the same way as I do as my speedometer. You know, I, I didn't once when I got pulled over, I didn't yell at the, at the, at the speedometer. I, I, didn't, I didn't blame the calendar for me showing up to an appointment late. I didn't look at the clock and yell at the clock because I, I burnt dinner by leaving it in the oven too long. What, whatever those data points are, they are an indication of everything else that's going on in your life. And so, so when I finally got to the point where I said, you know what, I am not giving the scale power, uh, that is when I completely changed my mindset. Now, if you've done that as well, and your letter to the scale does that for you, and that, and that takes the power away, you can still understand that the scale is data. But so many times, and this happened with the previous email from the show, is that, you know, I firmly believe that that goal is a, is a look and a feel, and, and it's how you feel about yourself. And, you know, if, if you're there, it doesn't matter if it's the you know, one to two to seven pound difference on the scale to me. I'm not trying to satisfy a program. I'm trying to satisfy me and, and, and trying to wake up every single day on fire, happy, energized, feeling good about myself. I'm not going to let that, that energy dissipate just because a scale says that last night you had a cheeseburger at 9 o'clock at night and, and it's still stay, sticking with you. So, so that's where I had to finally take this. I'm glad to see you're working with a personal trainer. Now, that, that is absolutely great work. I always recommend that as well. But let's go all the way back to the beginning and talk about the most obvious thing. You're down 106.2 pounds. Yes, it's working. Whatever you're doing is working. At this point, if nothing else changes with you and your scale, you're down 106.2 pounds. Nothing can take that away from you except for you. As you celebrate all that you have done, you know, you just have to keep that at the complete top of your mindset. You know, and when you get closer and closer to goal, my guess for you is that, you know, for, for so long you carried this extra 106.2 pounds that, that your goal weight is a number that you just kind of arbitrarily picked out. It doesn't mean anything. It's not a number you've been at recently. So how do we, how do we arrive at this just picking a number out of the air? So what I want you to do, I want you to back up. I want you to celebrate the amazing work that you've done. I want you to celebrate the amazing life that you built. I want you to celebrate how awesome you feel down 106.2 pounds. That's what I want you to focus on. It doesn't, the rest of this doesn't truly matter. And if you need to break up with a scale, I get it. You know, if you need to smash one, I get it. But what I'm telling you is that, is that scale rewarded you with 106.2 pound weight loss. It showed that reward as you rewarded yourself, I should say. So, so let's be a little kinder. I, I try very hard in my life. I, you know, I don't do a great job, but I try very hard in my life not to hate anything. Um, you know, I think it's very important mentally for me to, to embrace love and trying to celebrate every thing that I do. And, uh, and that's kind of how I live my day. It's kind of how I live my life. And that's how, that's how, why we build this community where we just continue to lift each other up. But Saber, congratulations on your amazing work. Uh, I'm glad to see you come to terms with it. It's clearly working for you. So, so don't let my advice sway you. Uh, continue to do everything that you're doing. And, and let's celebrate the fact that you're down 106.2 pounds. What is it that you're celebrating? Let's share it on the air. Go to fatdag.com. Click on the Wise Advice Podcast link to send in your celebrations, your comments, your questions. I'll certainly work them in as, as part of the show. 
I want you to email in your celebrations because I really want you to be proud of what you're doing. When, when you have that internal pride, nothing can knock you off your game. When you wake up every single day on fire, motivated, ready to get this done, you are the most powerful thing out there. The world needs to know about it. The world needs to hear how awesome you are and other people want to emulate that as well. Well, that's going to do it for this time. Remember that losing weight and getting healthy has nothing to do with luck. You have to remain disciplined and focused. Set your sights on your goal and go after it. I wish you good focus. Thank you for listening to the Wise Advice Podcast. Did you know for as little as $1 a month, you can take the next step as a wingman and support the show? Visit fatdag.com, click on Become a Patron today.